So, I don't think I've been reading enough new releases this year. <laughs> we're in June. Oh my god, we're in June. Don't. Oh my god. Let's not talk about it. I think I've read five 2024 releases. So in today's video, we're going to be playing 2024 release roulette, baby, where I'm going to make a spinny wheel of all the 2024 releases that I own. And whatever ones we land on, I have to read. And I'm very, very excited. I've got some 2024 releases that I'm so excited for that I'm almost so nervous for. And then I've got a few 2024 releases that are kind of wild cards. I've either been sent by publishers or I just picked up for kind of like on the whim reasons, you know, and I'm excited to see what I think. So I don't know how many we'll do. I've got a pretty busy week. We'll probably read two or three books in this vlog because there's a lot of crazy life stuff happening behind the scenes this week that will be finished by the end of the week, but it will probably impact how much I read at the start of the week. So shall we just go find out what our first book is going to be? I don't think I'm actually going to choose it today because I'm finishing up some other reading today, but yeah, let's flip to Megan in the future finding out what we're gonna be reading first. Hello friends, please excuse my appearance. <laughs> I feel I'm having a very stressful day, I don't wanna talk about it. But um <laughs> You're right, Nika. No, I'm not alright. Everything's just stressing me out at the moment. But um, I do want to read. I want to find out what I'm going to be reading. So here's our spinny wheel, like I mentioned, of all of the 2024 releases that I own but have not yet read. Quite a few of these I think I'm kind of leaning towards saving for the Goodreads video at the end of the year. Like I don't really want to get the last murder at the end of the world. I feel like I should read that at the end of the year. That's going to be nominated for the Goodreads Choice Awards. So some of these, if I was in my power, I don't think I'd choose to read right now. But some of them, there's a lot of them I'm excited for. So, I mean, it's not, it's out of my hands. <laughs> We're only going to spin it once now. We're going to read one book and then read it and then spin. So we're gonna do the spins after we read each book. Should we just do it? I feel like I'm gonna throw up. Okay, should we spin? We're spinning. Oh my god, I just did it. What's it gonna be? 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 <gasps> it's butter. Okay, that's exciting. So that's a translated one that's just come out this year. And it's, and as far as I know, it's about a serial killer cook who like kills men. Oh, absolutely. I think maybe that's what I need right now. I'm very excited. So I will go start butter. I'll let you know. I think it's quite long. So I'll let you know when I'm a little bit of the way through it what I'm thinking. But yeah, I just need some, need some escapism today. I need something to get me out of my rut. So hopefully that will be it for me. Hello friends. I It's been a few days. It's been a few days. I last filmed on Monday. Um, it's Thursday. Yeah, it's Thursday because I have not wanted to read this. I'm halfway through, which is a bit of a feat because this is quite a long book. The audiobook is 17 hours long, but I'm halfway through and I'm really not enjoying it. I'm so sorry. I'm just not, I don't like it. I'm not interested. I don't care. So basically, the synopsis I told you, there's a woman who has supposedly killed a lot of men that she was romantically involved with and she's a chef or she cooks for them and there's a journalist our main character is a journalist who is kind of interviewing her and investigating her story and her life and is kind of becoming obsessed with her simultaneously and I'm just so bored <laughs> it's so long it doesn't need to be this long there's nothing happening there's nothing happening also it's one of those books where the chapters are so long like we only had nine chapters and like 200 pages I should be on chapter 30 by now <laughs> <laughs> Should we speed it up a little bit? Yeah. I don't know. There's just something about it that really is just not pulling me in. And I'm just finding it, like, too long for its own good. Like, it's... Sometimes you get those books where, like, where's the editor? Is the editor in the room with us? Does the editor exist? Is the editor... Was this edited? Because <laughs> I just think sometimes... Cut it. You know what I mean? I do also want to mention that... It's very, it, this book is very much about food and like women's relationship with food and how women are taught to, particularly in Asian cultures, taught to restrict and be very, very thin. And about characters encountering food in a, like allowing themselves to eat without rules for the first time. And it's got a lot of descriptions of rich, heavy food. And as someone who's had a shit relationship with food my entire life. I don't talk about it a lot on YouTube because I just get, I get very nervous about talking about it. I talk about it a little bit in like my patron life updates where like 30 people here in the top tier see it because <laughs> that's kind of the only place I feel comfortable talking about it. But um, throughout my life, my relationship with food has kind of oscillated between extremes, between very, very restrictive 
or very not restrictive. And someone did comment a while ago, like trigger warnings for food and like if you have bad relationship with food for this. And I kind of like ignored that because I've never, as an individual, I've never had to personally, I've never been triggered by anything in a book. You know, I think trigger warnings are very important, but like for me personally, I've never felt triggered by reading something and I kind of do is this what I don't know if this is what being triggered feels like but it's making me very uncomfortable this book and I don't think it's almost I think it's almost not good for me to be reading this mentally I feel like it's like I, my relationship with food isn't in the best place right now and I feel like it's making it worse so I kind of just want to finish it because I just don't think this is the book for me like like I think if you don't have issues around food this is this is fine to read but I think a lot of my and it's it's purposely it's almost like a horror in a way I feel like <laughs> maybe that's kind of a bit personal but like it's fun to the thriller but it's 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 the way that it's kind of like pushing the boundaries of like kind of testing you on subjects it reminds me of what a lot of horror tries to do does that make sense like I think of natural beauty by Ling Ling Huang or any, any horror that kind of tries to make you feel uncomfortable, right? This book here is trying to make you as the reader feel uncomfortable. And I just don't know if this is good for me. I think I'm gonna leave. I don't, I don't know. I'm struggling with it. I'm gonna try and read the rest today and just finish it off because this is one I've been very excited for. But yeah, I think it, what it's doing is very, very interesting. But is it for me? I don't think so. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna go out for a walk now with Tom because he's leaving me for a month. He's basically going to work up north for a month. I'm not going with him because he's gonna stay with someone rather than us getting our own place. I'll probably go visit at some point, but um, this is gonna be like the longest we've ever spent apart. He's leaving tomorrow. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna go out for lunch and for a walk. And I mean, he's like around here, but we're, go we're actively going out rather than me just staying in and working because it's a weekday. Oh my God. I've been going out on a weekday. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go out for a walk now and then hopefully come home and finish this. And I'll let you know what I think when I finished it. I've been put through torture reading this like I finished it but at what cost I didn't need to finish it I have nothing more to say to you really the last time I checked in I've read like 250 pages since then the most hideous experience for me to go through how horrible and shit I think this book is far too long. It's far too long. A book should not be nearly 500 pages and I'm ending it like it gets bogged down. It gets bogged down by things it doesn't need. <laughs> this book could have been 300 pages quite easily. We all could have been on our merry way. I mean, I am saying it's 500. It's like 450, but we're around, it's 451 and we're rounding up. <laughs> it just gets bogged down with just scenes upon scenes upon scenes of shit. No one cares about, no one cares about. And I think the issue with this book, oh, I'm getting like, my asthma is getting set up. <laughs> I don't think it achieves anything that it's trying to achieve. Yes, it's a bit unsettling, like I said to you, but a lot of that dissipates in the second half. Yes, it's commenting on like women's like body image and, and food images, but like it, it doesn't go beyond, oh my God, a character gained weight and people told her she looked fat. <laughs> like that's, that's all it is. Like it's so surface level and it's trying to examine human psyche and why people act the way we do and, you know, fr fictitious, but also like obsessive relationships with these characters. But it's so barely, it, it doesn't succeed in any of it. 
I don't know. I'm going to give this two stars because some of it could just be a case of me really not getting it versus the book not being successful. But I don't know if that's the case. I don't know. I just really don't think it's very good. It's so long. And for what? And for what? What did you say that's new and exciting and fresh and fun? Let me ask you a very fair question. What do you do successfully? Quickly. I thought our main character, like she tries to give all of the kind of female protagonists and like, and side characters, like an interesting added element to their story. But I just felt A, it got convoluted and B, I did not care. I did not care one jot. I did not care one bit. I didn't care. <laughs> I spent so long reading this book. I spent so long reading this book and to, and to tell you what, she just makes a fucking turkey at the end. Whoop do do. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm, I'm done with, with obsession over food descriptions and butter. Oh my God, we talk about butter 10,000 times. Let me tell you, girly, you have not tasted butter. You think you've tasted butter. You're giving me all this shit about butter. Go try Marks and Spencer's, what is it? It's like their sea, it's posh sea salt butter. It's like in a black package. Anyways, that's the best butter you'll ever taste. But <laughs> You don't need to see me write a whole book about it. And I just felt like the points it's trying to make are very ham-fisted, are very like, oh, you know, I'm making a point about body image or food or whatever. It's just like, it's shoved down my throat. And I feel like the second half, we switched perspectives a couple of times. I'm not sure that entirely worked. It didn't work for me. It's a two star. I'm so sorry. We're going to go pick another book. <laughs> Yeah, let's just go upstairs and pick another book, shall we? And I'm going to start reading it today in the hope that... I just feel like I'm cursed. I want to... I cannot tell you how badly I want a five star. I want it with my whole being. I want to rave about a book. I want to have fun reading. I want reading to actually make me think something, not me just sitting there like... <sighs> the whole time I'm reading this book. I've read 500 pages and I've... What did I just say to you? What did I actually... Like, is that a good clip? No, it's not. Because this book gave me nothing to say. Anyways, let's go pick a book, shall we? <laughs> See what we're reading next. Okay, I thought since we need to have some fun, <laughs> why don't we watch together the trailer for A Good Girl's Guide to Murder? Because I haven't watched it yet and I'm very excited. I'm very nervous about the adaptation of this, but I have faith. I feel like the BBC doing it is kind of the best people who could have done it for some reason. Don't ask me why. <laughs> but I just have a lot of faith in the BBC doing it and seeing how involved Holly Jackson's been. I'm very excited. I can't wait any longer. I feel like I need something in this life to cheer me up. <laughs> okay, I'm probably gonna have the, the trailer small on the screen. Let me scoot on over here to avoid them copywriting me. <laughs> oh, my name's Pip Fitzmoby. Over the last few months, I've been investigating the Andy Bell case. <gasps> oh, and just so you know, I got the wrong person. Oh, shit. What is it with you in this case? The whole world thinks Sal seems guilty. It never made sense to me. Interview one. I just wondered if I could ask you some questions. His younger brother, Ravi, was the last up. person to see him alive. <laughs> the town looks very cute. I don't know if it's what I imagined. Well, I know you. <gasps> nope, just been Ravi. With muffins. Oh, they're Why cute. Why did you think he was innocent? I knew It's so. not overdone. I've never hurt her. Sal didn't do it. Who did? I guess that's what we need to find out. Oh my God, do it on my own. I don't know if this is how I imagined everything from the book. This is very fast paced. Good girl, Pip. Are you really ready for that? Any one of them could have killed Andy. It was five years ago. And everyone except for you wants to forget it ever happened. You think you're this good person? My love, I've been very nice. you're not? What have you done? Love of my life? Yeah, come and get me. Okay, interesting. That was very fast paced. I don't really know what I think of it yet. <laughs> I feel like I've forgotten what's happened in the first book. For me, the third book is so transformative. I'm like, what the fuck happened in the first book? And I'm not, I don't know who's who yet. I haven't looked at the cast other than when like, you know, Pip is Pip and like Ravi is Ravi. A lot of the girlies, I don't know who's who, you know, like her friends and like characters. I can't, I'm not, I can't, I don't know who's who. But it looks good. It looks very fast paced. I feel like the book is slower. It's more like kitschy, whereas this is like, oh my God. But I think it looks good. I think it looks good. I think I could, I don't really recognize, someone's like recognizing the scenes in the book makes me a little smart. <laughs> it has been in my defense, in my defense, in my defense. It has been, how many years since I read this book? Three years? 
but I'm very excited for it. I cannot wait. I'm gonna watch it. I don't know if I'll do a video. Maybe I'll do a video reviewing it. Would you guys be interested in that? I don't know if I'll do a watch along. Do we know how many episodes it's gonna be? Because I feel like that's a lot to do like a watch along <laughs> video, but maybe I'll do a review for it afterwards. Okay, Wheel of Names. We need to get rid of butter. Okay, I'm hoping for something fast paced. I just really need something, guys. I just really need... <laughs> The universe is following me. And I feel like I need something that I'm gonna devour. I need I need to fall in love with reading again, quite frankly. I think out of the list that we've got, Night Watching would be a good pick, Helly and Death would be a good pick, Miss Laid in Parts Off Known would be a good pick, How to Solve Your Own Murder. Okay, so shall we see what it is? Let's spin. <gasps> oh my god, I feel so sick. I feel so sick, I feel so sick, I feel so sick. <gasps> Miss Laid, Miss Laid, I have to solve your own murder. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Okay, we got one of the ones I wanted. What were the chances? Well, I suppose, like I said, they were like 25%, which isn't the worst odds in the world. How to solve your murder. That's good, because that's actually on my, um, what's it called? <laughs> TBR cleaner this month. I put it as my wild card. I think this would be a really fun one to read. Hopefully I'll read, I'm just gonna hunker down and read it this evening. Oh my God, but I feel a lot of pressure around it. I kind of don't want to read it. <laughs> Should we re-spin it? I demand a recount. One for Martin. Two for Martin. Would you like another recount? No. No, all of my 2024 releases, I think I feel a lot of pressure around. So I still think this is gonna be a good one to pick. Um, I kinda don't wanna read it though. <laughs> okay, we're reading How to Solve Your Murder. Hopefully I'll check in with you some point this evening. Hopefully I won't be able to put it, put it down. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to reading this one. So I'll let you know what I think on a little bit of the way through. I think it is a pretty fast paced one. So I'm excited. Oh, I feel sick. No, I think this is, I think, <laughs> I think this is the right decision. Okay, let's, let's go see, shall we? Hello, cuties. I am halfway through How to Solve Your Murder, and I have thoughts. <laughs> so, I think I've told you the plot of this 1,000 times, but we're following a girl who goes to visit her great aunt's home because she receives a letter saying, oh, we're gonna read out the will, there's been changed to the will. So she goes there, and when she arrives there, the great aunt is dead. She's dead. And the great aunt worked on a prophecy when she was a teenager saying, you're gonna get murdered, babes, and spent her whole life obsessing over the fact that someone was gonna murder her. And the protagonist, the great niece, gets tasked posthumously, a letter from the grave is like, you need to solve my murder. I believe I have been murdered, you need to solve my murder, is basically what this is. I was gonna check with you about a hundred pages in, but I didn't feel like the book has, had fully crystallized into what it was trying to do. She only gets told, okay, you need to solve my murder, like 150 pages in. I'm on page 190 now. So I feel like the book has only just begun to just begun it's like the story beyond the synopsis right and I think like almost halfway is pretty late for that to happen so I'm not at the moment I don't feel like the beginning was dragged out because we were meeting all of these characters in this village and getting to know them and their relation to one another and their relationship to Francis the great aunt so I don't feel like it was slow but I'd wonder if by the end of the book I'm gonna feel like this second half of her trying to solve the murder I wanted to be a bigger chunk of the book, if that makes sense. But I am really enjoying it. It's a cute little fun murder mystery. It's a proper whodunit, right? Like it's a proper whodunit. We're being given this cast of characters, kind of Agatha Christie style, who all have secrets and relations and crossovers with one another. I think that's something Agatha Christie always did really well. You'd often have family dynamics or relationship dynamics with lots of different characters who like, this person is connected to this person. This person's connected to this person. It's very reminiscent of that. It's this quaint English village. <laughs> like there's a little, there's a little stately home and there's little cottages around and that's basically a little hotel, a little boutique hotel. Um, I can really picture where it's set. I do think there is a lot of characters. There's a lot of characters. And interestingly enough, I remember when I watched Ashley from Ashley's Little Libraries vlog for this, she mentioned that on the pub, the US publishers, oh sorry, <laughs> should I put on Instagram reels? On the US publishers Instagram, there's like a list of the suspects. And the suspects are like five or six of the characters. I don't know if I think I should tell you who they are because I don't want to spoil it for you, but they're five or six of the characters that I wouldn't have immediately guessed are the suspects. Like there's certain characters omitted in that and I'm like... <laughs> That's suspicious. That's weird. So I think there's a lot of characters and that can sometimes get a little bit overwhelming. Something I feel like Lucy Foley does, which a few of my, I'm doing a 
weekend readathon for Bingathon, which is the readathon created by my patrons and by my mods. And we're doing a weekend edition, so we're doing loads of sprints this weekend. And um, a few of them were reading Midnight Feast by Lucy Freddy today. And I'm, oh, I'm so excited. But Lucy Freddy always does that very well, where it's a real condensed list of suspects, and you know who your suspects are straight away. There's like 20 characters, I feel like, if I tried to count, that could be the suspect in this. So that is a little bit of a weakness. But I'm enjoying the writing, I'm enjoying the story. Oh, it is dual timeline as well. So we've got brief flashback. Well, actually, I have, I'm hesitant to call it dual timeline. A lot of you have told me it's dual timeline. We've got flashbacks to the past from a di from diary entries that Frances wrote from when she was a teenager, but they're only every like three or four chapters. My brother just made a noise. <laughs> And I wouldn't call that a dual timeline. I'd call it like flashback scenes because my, I actually don't mind this. My biggest issue with dual timelines was that there's two that are competing to be the lead timeline. Obviously in this one, the present day is the lead timeline. So yeah, I'm enjoying it. Like I said, I feel like it's really only just gotten like all the setup has just been given and it's only just getting rolling. But I think it's an intriguing setup with a lot of intriguing characters and there's mysteries in the past and mysteries in the present, which I'm sure are all gonna come together. I do wanna say, I think I'm only gonna read this book and this vlog. I did want it to be a three book vlog, but this week has just been crazy. Tom moved up six hours away on two days notice. Raw has been very ill. I don't know if I've spoken about this in the vlog, but it's been, I spent like an hour just now just looking at her. <laughs> um, she hasn't been very well all week and she's going through like peaks and she's now on quite strong antibiotics for 30 days and we think they're making her quite nauseous today but she's basically been in my closet for a week like hiding away like refusing to come out she only eats if you bring it to her we've had to move everything upstairs that she needs because she hasn't really been coming downstairs so this week has just been tough and i knew this week would be difficult because we knew there'd be a lot of uncertainty around Tom and I moving somewhere or Tom moving somewhere for a little bit. And so the big, pro the, the big project vlogs are coming back next week. <laughs> I just needed one that was a little bit simpler for this week. So I think this is gonna be the only vlog because I do need to read my patron book club book this weekend as well. So I think if I'm realistic with myself, I'm probably gonna yeah, I can't speak. I'm probably gonna finish this and then finish this vlog. I am gonna go make dinner in a second, go stare at Rora. <laughs> I've got reading sprints. I've got more reading sprints in like an hour. Um, so I'm hoping to finish this tonight. So I'll probably check in with you in a couple hours once I've finished it. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see where this goes in the second half. Hello friends. I have just finished How to Solve Your Own Murder. And I'm gonna give this four stars. There's a lot I enjoyed about it. There are some issues with it, however. So firstly, it's a pretty strong murder mystery, right? It's like my bread and butter. I feel like it does the basics pretty well. I think it does what it says on the tin. It does what I need to. Do I think it's the most ingenious murder mystery I've ever read? No. But did I have fun reading it? Yes. The setting, this little quaint English, like old school midsummer murder style town, I think is very lovely. And I think also is very accessible to other audiences. Like it's not like niche, niche references. It's like your postcard image of a British town, which I don't mind because it means it's accessible to like US audiences and stuff. I also really enjoyed the flashback scenes. I know. <laughs> Shock horror, everyone. I wasn't expecting that at all. But I really enjoyed the flashback scenes. I thought they added a lot to the story. I really looked forward to reading them, but not so much that I wasn't enjoying the present day timeline. I think they were very much rooted. I think it's the 1960s in which they're set. And I think they're very rooted. I'm just checking. Yeah. <laughs> very rooted in their time period. And I really enjoy those elements. However, there are a few problems with this book. Firstly, Girlie comes to realizations out of nowhere. She puts puzzle pieces together seemingly out of nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like links to clues of oh this person this that means this person did this or this person did this and you are not following with her you're just like okay <laughs> sure which I don't think is a hallmark of a great murder mystery a great murder mystery you realize along with the author or preferably actually just before the character realizes not long before but just before so you feel kind of clever <laughs> you realize what's happening whereas she was like I realized that this means x y and z and you're like how did you how did you realize that? <laughs> because sometimes you weren't shared, there'd be like a line she'd read somewhere that you hadn't been told yet and you're just told it when she realized it. So I think that did impact the reading experience. I think on the whole, it's a little bit too ambitious perhaps. Like it's really trying to do so much. Like I said, there's so many characters, like 20 characters and they have very complex interpersonal 
like dynamics and there's like in some cases like three generations of a family line and I was like struggling to keep <laughs> track of like who was what generation and how these people were related. I think it is a little bit ambitious and that made it difficult to follow. Do you have any other negatives? I don't think so. So I'd say it balances out to a, 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 a solid four, like a not tentative four, not solid four, somewhere in between. <laughs> Even though we have 0.25 rating options, there's levels within a four of what a four is. You know, I didn't love it, but I am going to continue on the series. I know this was like a super hyped one for me, and I wouldn't say it lived up to my expectations, but like, let's be honest, my expectations are always too high. And yeah, I did enjoy it. So that's the end of this video. I just want to say, I have been incredibly self-conscious about how I'm coming across on camera because like I've mentioned a few times, probably the last month and a half have been some of the toughest mental health wise and life wise and stress wise that I've had since I've been on YouTube. And thus I found elements a bit more difficult. I found reviewing books a bit more difficult. I found editing a bit more, I found everything a bit more difficult. And I just feel like I'm not as fun and you guys won't want to watch me when I'm not as fun. <laughs> so I'm just gonna say, please bear with. I'm hoping everything will get back to normal soon. And I feel like the next couple of weeks, I'm really excited for the videos I got coming, like I said, and hopefully everything should start settling down a little bit. So just um, bear with me if I'm, I think I'm more fun to watch when I'm positive. <laughs> So just bear with and hopefully that should all be coming back soon. But thank you for being with me. Like I said, this was just a little fun way to tick off some more 2024 releases. Um, let me know what your favourite 2024 release you've read so far this year is. Mine's probably, what is it? Warm Hands of Ghosts? I think that's the only 2024 I've given a five star so far. I don't know, something, something like that. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know your favourite 2024 release of the year so far down below and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye!